Hello, welcome back to Cloud and Web Developer. Today I'm going to be making a full stack small Flask application that I'm going to be deploying to Elastic Beanstalk. Now, why Elastic Beanstalk and not Amplify or S3 like we did for previous app in previous videos? Well, it's because for this case, we're going to have a backend. And whenever you have a backend, you might need to have an EC2 instance running that maybe is going to be using a MySQL database, a Lambda functions, etc. And in that case, you're better off using Elastic Beanstalk because it's going to be able to read all your requirements and spin all the and provision, all the necessities that you need for that app to, to work correctly. It's uh, very easy to use and also very easy to terminate. Once you finish with your application that you don't want it on the cloud running, you can easily terminate in one place and it's going to terminate your instances, your databases and everything else that your app involves. So for today, I'm going to be using Python and Flask, like I say. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that you have Python installed in your system. And one way to know is to type Python version or Python 3 dash dash version. If you see this kind of reply in your terminal, then it means that you have installed and you can proceed with the video. If you do not see that, you might need to go to python.org, go into the download section and uh, select your appropriate operating system. Today, I'm going to be using Mac OS. So I would just click on this one right here. The latest version is going to download an executable file. And all you need to do is just to accept all the prompts, install in the root directory and you're, ba you're in business. And once that's done, you can check in your terminal with this command once again, and you should be able to see the version in which you're running Python. Now that this is out of the way, we can start by creating a, I'm going to be working on this directory, AWS Flask EV, which is where I am already. And uh, an amazing thing that Python has going is that it can create virtual environments. And we're going to create one because that way we ensure that all the dependencies and all the files that we're going to be using are going to be contained into one single location. And this is not going to be polluting other areas in your computer, but also it's going to be easy for you to encapsulate a de and deploy to Elastic Beanstalk, as you will see in a few moments. And the way that you make a virtual environment, this is one of a couple ways available for you. It's virtual env, and then the name that you want to call your virtual environment. It could be anything. I'm going to call it vert. You click enter and it's going to create a folder, as you can see here. And what's, once that's done, we need now to activate it. So source, you're going to the name of your folder, vert bin activate and when it, when you see this uh, name between in parentheses it means that you are indeed in your virtual environment and you're ready to start installing dependency and libraries and everything else so i clear my console and i'm going to start by using pip which is the package management of python pip install flask and for this exercise i'm going to put 1.0.2 Okay, and this is the only dependencies I'm going to be needing for this project. If you had more, this is where you would install them. And once that's done, we're going to use the pip freeze command. And this shows you how many uh, dependencies or packages, however you want to call them, are uh, necessary for your app to work at this point in time. And so what we need to do now is to put all these dependencies in a requirements.txt file. And so I'm going to create that file with touch requirements.txt and there's an, an empty file is created I'm going to select from click to work zoog, paste save that very important okay so now we have our requirements I can clear my console and now from this point on I'm going to open this in code so we can start uh, coding our actual app I use the shortcut code dot and that opens the folder that I was in, which is, as you can see, the vert and requirements are there. And I'm going to create a file and it's going to be called application.py. This is going to be the main uh, file that we're going to be writing the application. And the first thing you would be doing normally would be from flask import flask with capital K 
otherwise autocorrect into flask okay and then i'm gonna copy paste code that amazon has in one of their tutorials and examples for you and i'm gonna make that available as well in the repository that is linked in this uh, video uh, but essentially what it does is a small web app that it creates a server and an endpoint which which you can actually interact a little bit so i'm going to save that and you can see it in action if i go back to my terminal and now i can run with python application.py and you can see now it has created a uh, local host a server in uh, the port 5000 and to see it in action i just go back to my browser and localhost 5000 and i can see the the contents of this file now executed here and it's a hello world and it tells you that this is a restful uh, service in which you can actually append a name after the end of the url and then the app is gonna spit back hello and that name for example carlos enter and it tells me hello carlos and i can go back and so on and so forth so the simplest app that you can imagine it's already there uh it's not very difficult in fact it's very well commented so all this is going to be available for you to actually um, have a look and have a play but that that is great so now it's working in localhost 5000 in my local computer but if i wanted to show this to somebody else over the internet i'm gonna need to put it live somewhere and that somewhere like you guessed it is gonna be elastic beanstalk and i'm gonna go to my main management console if you do not have an aws account there's always a link at the bottom of this video how to make one elastic beanstalk is here so i'm gonna click on it and i am going to start by creating a new environment i'm gonna create a web server environment select you can call it whatever you want uh, python flask web app and uh, you can pull it back in and then automatically uh, you can have a prefix to your address if you want otherwise if you leave it blank it's going to auto generate one for you that is going to be valid and it's going to be a managed platform and it's going to be python of course and i'm going to use 3.6 for this version and i'm going to upload my code now what do you need to upload is go to your folder where our files are contained and as you can see i have the virtual environment requirements and application i need to zip these files but you do not need to zip the virtual environment itself just make sure that you compress the requirements and the application and whatever other files you might have the virtual environment will be generated on the back end by uh, elastic beanstalk okay so archive.zip so that's what we need to upload here so i'm going to choose a file okay so and uh, as i can see the archive.zip is there i'm gonna double click on that and i'm gonna create the environment so this is gonna take a little bit of time perhaps five ten minutes so i can pause the video here and when it's ready i'm gonna show it to you and here in the log files is very interesting because you can see what's doing in the back so it's actually waiting for an EC2 instance to launch. Then it does launch the instance. It creates an elastic IP address. So you can keep accessing that uh, URL anytime, even after you restart your application. And also creates a security group name for you uh, with this name uh, in this region because I am in Tokyo at the moment. And it also creates a storage with S3 bucket for your environment data. So it's doing all these things based on my application needs and I don't have to do anything myself. So it's quite amazing and it's such an easy thing to be to be using and getting into. Okay, it's finally done. As you can see, the health of it, it's okay. All, all the checks were uh, positive. And this is the address in which now I can access the application. So I'm gonna open in a new window. And as you can see, it's exactly the same like we had in the local host just a while ago. And we can even try once again, let's see, YouTube viewer, enter, and it says, hello, YouTube viewer. So the app itself is working. And that's pretty much all there is to it. From this point on, you can start building on top of that uh, template that we upload onto your Python application and make it as complicated as it needs to be. Now you have a nice cozy space 
on the cloud for you to be able to test and to share this information. Now, once you are done with this, because look, it, uh, like I said, it does create quite a bit of uh, resources here and there. Um, if you're still within one year of the time that you made your AWS account, these T2 micro instances are free. So it created a T2 micro instance for me to play and for my app to live and to work, right? If I want to stop this, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it manually from the EC2 and the, from the S3 and from security groups. You just, like I said, you just need to go onto your uh, environment in Elastic Beanstalk. And this is the one, it still says pending, but I just need to refresh, I suppose. There it is. So this is the app that we have. And now imagine I'm done with it. I don't want to pay anymore. I know that I was paying anything because it's just basically a tiny little app at the moment. And I'm going to terminate my environment. Very important, especially when you are actually using resources that cost money to keep uh, uh, an eye on that. So I would just have to copy the name, paste it here. And I suppose there's a few. You can restart the environment, rebuild the environment with new information every time you, you update your code. But I'm just going to terminate the environment at this point. Terminate and it's gonna take a while as well and even after it's terminated you still have let's say 30 minutes that, that is living in your environment it says terminated and you can change your mind and you can spin it up again so it has some leniency time for you to in case you you didn't want that all right i hope this was useful i hope you're gonna be considering elastic beanstalk in the future whenever you have to host a application however small or large you can put it in there uh, any backend that you can imagine is going to be available for you as well inexpensive easy to use and very reliable highly available and scalable so it can grow or shrink as much as you need it in the blink of an eye and if you have a question please let me know in, in the comments below subscribe i'm putting tutorials every week related to aws cloud development and web development so this is carlos for cloud web developer i'll see you next week bye, -bye.